This is a presentation on how to use opcsystems.net to create smart client applications. In this video, we'll see how to use Microsoft Visual Studio to create standard Windows applications with the opcsystems.net components, and we'll use the Internet as a communication source. Smart client applications can be deployed very easily. They have a great user experience, and it's easy to keep all clients up to date in one central location. Smart clients do not support ActiveX controls or legacy COM components, so it's important to use all 100% managed components in your software application. You can see a live example of a smart client at opcsystems.com under the Smart Client page. opcsystems.net implements .NET remoting. So this makes it possible for all of our components to use the Internet as a communication source. We eliminate DCOM as a need for communications and simply use TCP connections so it's very easy to implement those remote connections. Each opcsystems.net client product supports unlimited numbers of client connections to each licensed service. Each client application can also connect to unlimited numbers of remote services. After you have installed opcsystems.net, we're now ready to begin the development using Microsoft Visual Studio. If you don't have a copy of Microsoft Visual Studio, you can download a free version from Microsoft.com as Visual Basic Express or C Sharp Express. From Microsoft Visual Studio, we're going to select File, New, Project, and we're going to create a standard Windows application. The form designer will come up with a small form. Let's stretch the size of that form so we have a larger working area. We're now ready to drop in controls of OPC controls, OPC trend, and OPC alarm onto the form. If you have not added these to the toolbox yet, that's simply easy to do just by right clicking on the toolbox and selecting choose items. You then can select all OPC controls, OPC trend, and OPC alarm components. Let's select the OPC label component and drop that onto the form. We'll position that in the upper left of the form. Under the text property, there's a tag property called text OPC systems underscore tag. This is a property that we use to automatically change the text based upon the value that is coming from that particular tag. Let's use the browse button to the right and instead of browsing the local system we will browse a remote system so that we can deploy this application all over the world. We're going to use an internet domain name of www.opcsystemserver.com When we hit the select button, we'll now be browsing tags on an internet server located in Texas in the United States. Let's select the ramp2 button, ramp2 tag, select value, and we'll see that the tag returned contains double backslash, the domain name, backslash, and then the tag name. We'll select OK. Let's change the font of that text box so it's a little bit larger. Let's make it bold with a size of 16. Let's drop another control onto the form. Let's use the OPC controls button. We'll change the size of this button a little bit, make it a little larger. Let's go down to the text property of the button. Let's set the default text to pump. Let's go to the OPC text OPC systems tag property. We'll browse for a point again on the remote server at www.opcsystemserver.com. Let's select the tag pump and the parameter value. Now what we're going to do if the value is false we'll put in the text as pump is off. And in the true property, we'll say pump is on. 
We'll also be able to change this tag if we browse for pump value again under the set value OPC systems tag and turn the set value OPC systems property to true then when a user clicks on the button it will toggle the value of the pump. We also can change the data type to be keyboard entry for confirmation or text entry if you'd like. These are all different possible choices when you're using a OPC controls button. The last thing we'll do is we'll come up to the back color property and set the OPC systems tag for the back color also for the pump. In this way when the value is true the back color will be green and when the value is false it will be red and when the quality of this point is unknown it will be yellow. Next let's drop an OPC trend control onto the form. Select that from your toolbox and hold your left mouse key down and drag it into the size of the trend area that you would like it to be. To set the properties of the trend control, again right click, select properties. The first property that we're going to change is under chart rates. Let's set the time frame to 60 seconds. Let's jump down to the pens property. Select the browse button for the pen property and again we're going to connect to that remote service in Texas and browse for the tags ramp value let's add that random value and sign value select the ramp pen in the lower left list under the line style property let's change the line style to ellipsoid under the random pen let's change the line border color to green and let's change the marker uh, size to 10 and change the marker style to a sphere and under the sign pen let's change the y-axis high range high to 1 and the y-axis range low to minus 1. This is just one of the ways you can have each pen have its own individual scale. And let's change the line border color to red and the line fill color to um, to red as well and change the line style to a tube. When we select OK we should see some defaults for those pens and now let's change under the views property the lighting mode to metallic luster. Now let's drop an OPC alarms control component onto the form so we'll bring up the toolbox again and click on OPC alarm control click with your left mouse key and drag your mouse down and to the right under the alarm control we're going to change two properties the first the alarm grouping property we're going to change that to false to give us a little bit more room for the alarms to appear and we're going to change the alarm network nodes from the local host to that remote system in Texas we'll add that to the list and we'll remove the node for local host we'll click OK that way the alarm control will be subscribed to that system in Texas. Another property to arrange your controls on a form is the anchor property. For the alarm control, let's anchor this one to the bottom left and right. And for the trend control, 
Let's anchor it to all four, top, left, right, and bottom. We're now ready to run this application just to see how it looks. Here we have Windows Vista telling us we need to unblock this application. This is the first time it's run on this system. But you can see because we have TCP connections, we already have our data to our application. So if we click on the pump button, we'll see that it turns green and the text on the button changes uh, to pump is on. In the alarm control, we can acknowledge alarms by double clicking on the alarm itself. In the trend control, we can do some data analysis, maybe stop the trend, bring up a data cursor, and see what the values are at a specific time of day. Go back to runtime. We're getting live data that's cached from that system in Texas. We can also see that this is a 100% managed component as a WinForm application. It's difficult to do these 3D rotation features with a standard web application. So you can see the user experience is much improved over a web app. We're now ready to deploy the application using ClickOnce deployment. In the Solution Explorer, select your project, right click on it, and select Properties. There you'll find a Publish tab at the bottom. It's under the Publish tab that we find the ClickOnce deployment feature that makes smart clients possible. So you can choose a URL. It could even be a remote uh, website, uh, web server, to post your application to. There is nothing to register with this component, so all it needs to be is an install set located somewhere that all of your clients can reach. A web page will automatically be generated. In the options, you can choose to force your users to be able to only run the application when this web service is available or you give them the option which is the default to run the application in an offline mode even if the web service source is not available and under the published version the default is to automatically increment revisions or you can manually control which version that you would like to do I prefer to take control of which version so you can determine when clients are updated. Under the Options button, we have the features to determine what publisher, product name, support URL the application will be defined to, and also what is the web page name that will automatically be generated. If you then select Publish Now, the system will put your components together in an install set together with your application and automatically generate a web page. This is what the web page looks like in its generated form. It has an install button and this is simply a web page that you need to provide now to your users. When they click on the install button it will go out to the system check to see if there's a new version available. If it's the first time it's being run, of course it will need to bring that across. And this can be deployed even across the internet if you'd like. So we'll now bring across the application. Here's Windows Vista telling us that this is the first time this application has run on this system, but you notice that we already have the data using the TCP connections. So we'll select to unblock the application. So we are now connected to the system in Texas. You can see the rendering of the trend and alarm. It's a very interactive. We're getting real-time updates across the internet with the queuing effect. We can turn on the pump or turn off the pump. We can acknowledge individual alarms. We can rotate the trend. It's this type of user experience that uh, you won't be able to get with a web application.